Welcome to the Barge Right In. Hey guys, I was wondering if you had any cheap puzzle ideas. Just something quick and easy, but, you know, can put a good effect into the game. I think we might have some. In fact, I think we could dig right into our vault, and I have a puzzle that will fit this perfect. Ah, well, this is from the vault. Let's barge right in. Leave me hanging. So today we're going to be talking about uh, puzzles. Right? Well, in particular, we're going to bring out from our old vaults a uh, puzzle that was used in one of our games. Yeah, it was uh, it was a puzzle that uh, I was very proud of. Actually, um, it's one that I designed myself, um, and the players really enjoyed. Um, and any DM can do it, and I feel like that this could be very helpful in your D and D game. Yeah, it uh, didn't look like it really cost too much, and it was kind of a cool thing to have. Um, I think it's deteriorated a bit since he made it, but it's uh, right. It's still a cool piece and very simple. Anyone can do. Anyone can make. So. And you know, whenever you make a puzzle, you know, you really want to read your players. You know, because some you know some groups of players they thrive on puzzles because it's an actual physical challenge for them to endure in a game. Um, that really puts their brain to work. Yeah, definitely. Um, I don't know. I would either consult your players, or if you know your players well enough, and they would like something like this, uh, a physical puzzle is a good way to get them to be more immersed in the game, to kind of see what the what what they're doing, rather than you explaining it to them or writing it down or just showing them on a piece of paper. You can make this for them. Um, I do know, though, that some people just want to get through the story, don't really care too much about the puzzles, and, you know, just play to your, play to your audience, you know. Um, so, uh, do you want to bring up that, uh, that puzzle? Just kind of give them, show them real quick? Yeah, so this is what the puzzle and all, this is what it looks like, right, uh, like this, in total. And then you give them, like, the little piece of it before they found the, uh, the rest of the parchment. Yep, so basically the whole theory behind the puzzle is, you know, um, you're deciphering an old scroll or an old scripture of some kind. Yeah. Um, in most, in a lot of D&D games, you know, there are players who really thrive on the idea that they know a lot of languages, mm -hmm. you know, and as much as Dungeons & Dragons is rolling dice and is all about being able to know uh, different languages in your knowledge, yeah. you know, this can be a fun little puzzle. Yeah, especially um, if you have like a... a what do you call it, a language that, that they couldn't have learned. You know, yes. uh, something so you can get everyone involved in it rather than just, oh, I'm the skill junkie or I'm the guy who knows all the languages, I'm the guy who knows all the stuff, mm -hmm. and just deferring to that player every time that a puzzle comes up and, and giving them the answer. This way you can kind of get everyone involved a little bit. And, uh, yeah. And, you know. Yep. And the way that I described it, and you can come up with your own explanation, is I described it as an ancient language. Uh, a language that was a derivative of Draconic, um, so like they were able to write out a key based on their knowledges, um, and then once they were able to write out a key, they could then use that key to decipher the puzzle. Yeah, you have an example for them, right? I do. Uh, actually, right here, and I'm going to flash this up on screen too, but this is what I use here. Um, it's an Ethereum script. Um, but really, any language that comes with its own set of symbols uh, really will work. Um, and then from those symbols, you can then write your, your scripture out. Now, there are several parts to this. So I'm going to go over in detail the different parts uh, to put this kind of a puzzle together. Hmm. So let's jump in. So the first thing that you're going to want to do is you're going to want to take several pieces of paper... Um, I used uh, six in total, um, and I used uh, packing tape. You can really use whatever tape you want. Um, to uh, and Now, I made a mistake myself. I put the masking tape over the front as well without thinking about it. You really don't want to do that. You want to keep the, 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 the tape to the back so that the, the, the entire page itself can then be stained. Now, um... I think the, you have the alternative of using, say, cardboard paper or maybe even construction paper. Or poster board, even. Yeah, poster board. Um, 
Uh, so, you know, this is just what we happened to use was regular paper, just mm-hmm. from a printer kind of deal. Now, I will say, I will say that if you use poster paper or thicker paper, when you coffee stain it, which we're going to go over that in just a second, it doesn't wrinkle as well. And so, uh, especially poster paper. So you're not, uh, if you're going to use poster paper, I would almost suggest using a brown paint and a cotton ball, uh, you know, or like a gold paint. Uh, and a cotton ball to kind of dab it on there to give it that older older look. Yeah, I think there's plenty of uh, channels that would be able to maybe give a better example of how it's specifically made. But this is just for a basic, easy uh, one to do. Um, and you can experiment it with it yourself. Uh, but essentially, trying this coffee stain we did, you did with a, a basic paper. Now, yeah. for the coffee stain aspect of it, once you've got everything taped, then you're going to take regular coffee grain you prefer that you want to ground up ground up coffee grain um you're going to take i did a cup of coffee grain to a cup or two cups of water and you mix it up together and you want to let that sit for about five minutes you want to let the coffee really uh work its way into the water give it a couple of stirs but really let it sit for about five minutes after that five minutes you want to get yourself a thin strainer, one that's that has small enough holes to encompass the coffee grain to catch it, and you want to basically strain the water out of the solution so that all that you're left with is the coffee water itself. And it's now colored enough that it can create that stain look that you're looking for. Hmm. Once you have done that and you have just your coffee water, I suggest cotton balls. Those are my favorite. Uh, just like you can get those at any any store. And you take your cotton ball, you dip it into the water, and then you patch it onto your paper. So where where did you get this idea from? Was there a channel or a, a page or somebody in particular that told you about it? Well, this this actually uh, isn't the first puzzle that I've done like this. I have I did it one other time, mm-hmm. um, and I actually did another puzzle which will eventually premiere on this channel. Uh, where I used cotton balls to coffee stain um, another project of mine. And I actually got the idea from the DMs Crafter. Uh-huh. Uh, he had a he had a cool video where he did that. Um, and I thought it was just super awesome. And, man, it came out just wonderful. Um, and so, uh, and on top of that, y- uh, you actually had bought uh, this piece right here mm-hmm. uh, about four or five years ago. And it was coffee stained, and so between the two, um, I really uh, really wanted to try it yourself. Yeah, and it was yeah. You know, so coffee staining is something that's very effective. It really gives you an old texture to it. Mm-hmm. You know, as as you can hear here, it, it it even feels like it's old and crinkly. Yeah, you know, um, and, and I described it as an old scroll that you pulled out of a you know out of a, a buried site. That was a big scroll. Yeah, it it was. <laughs> I mean, it's a big one. Um, but it allows them to see it clearly. Um, and then they can sit there with their alphabet that they've deciphered. Um, and they can then figure out at that point what it says. You really want to, after you coffee stain it, you want to let it sit for at least a day or two, not only to dry, but for it to warp the paper a little bit to give it that old, old feeling to Mm it. Um, you know, uh, there are times where I, you know, in, in the other projects that I did, I did use a little bit of brown paint. Um, just to give it a little more color. Um, if you're going to do that, I would do the paint first before the coffee stain, but everybody does it differently. So you based this project off of what you saw on, on DM's craft. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So, um, and so, yeah, so that's, uh, once it took them about an hour, I would say to decipher this one here. Um, and it worked out really well because then it turns into a passphrase that the players then have to read. Uh, in order uh, to unlock whatever it is that they're trying to unlock. Yeah, and so you can make, uh, I mean, how long did it take you to make this overall then? Uh, it took me about, uh, it took me about two hours over the course of three days. Okay. Uh, because I wanted to let it dry. Um, and then, the ironically, it actually, it took the players quite a bit of time. Yeah. It took them almost two weeks. Uh, going into the third week before they finally got to the puzzle, and as you can tell, one effect that I did not anticipate, and when I get to show it here, yeah. it's got like a bluish color now at the bottom. 
And made it, your ink bleed. Yeah, uh, yeah. And so it's kind of a cool. It gives it a little more age. Um, and so I really like that. So I think it depends on your patience. But yeah, I mean, like a couple of hours yeah. of, of work definitely would help. And not a whole lot of money involved either. Just what paper, coffee grinds, some tape, uh, and cotton balls. So yep. that's, you know, a cheap project and something that you can make over the course of, especially if you get good at it, probably an hour or two that takes you maybe a couple of days just in the drying process. So it's an easy, easy piece you can make. You can make it custom. You can make a bunch of them. So you have a bunch of these old scrolls. Maybe you want to hang them up after if you really like how they turned out. And if you don't, then, I mean, it was only an hour and very little bit of your time. You can toss it and try again if you really care. But, um, but uh, yeah, we it, it, it's a really interesting project. And uh, these physical puzzles bring uh, aspect to the game, um, you know, that... that uh, you don't normally get just from out of book source, you know, yep. uh, even just regular puzzles where they actually have to do the deciphering themselves um, and get kind of an idea of what it would be like for a, <laughs> right. a group, uh, your player, your the character that you're being, what they had to do to decipher this. Yep. Um, now, so. when you get really good at this whole copies and anything, you can oh, yeah. then start to do stuff like this. Holy oh, yeah. cow, it's it's just... It's beautiful, isn't beautiful. it? Beautiful, yeah. So, uh... This I got at a convention from an artist. Uh, in particular, I love uh, Lovecrafty and stuff. You'll get that from my uh, a lot of my players. Just the the madness and horror nonsense and uh, knowledge that you shouldn't seek. Uh, this is supposed to be Haster the Yellow King, um, and the, some ancient text kind of to be a scroll that maybe summons him or you know whatever you want to do. This could uh, be used in a game just uh, as a as a cool piece, you know, uh, you could even use this to, as a uh, as a puzzle to decipher as well, um, uh, as easily as any other. But in this particular case, I bought it just for art, <laughs> and uh, and it turned out rather well. It has this uh, nice dark coffee stain, and I know he gave me a very vague uh, example of how he did it, but it even had the smell afterwards of, of mm -hmm. the coffee, and uh, I believe the big difference um, was that he got already kind of brown paper and so the coffee just made it more dark and he uh and he's done it a lot as he had a lot of these physical pieces available and uh, i believe he inked uh he put this ink in afterwards um so that it's uh it didn't bleed but that's you know that's sort of a artistic option if you want it to kind of look like yeah it absolutely so but, uh, yeah so this is just a, a cool example of what coffee stain can look like when you get real good at it. And uh, um, beyond that, man, we hope that you like our puzzles here. So yep. uh, please, if you want to see more puzzles or, or more art that, uh, that we've collected in our, from our vaults, please uh, give us a like and a subscribe. Check us out on Facebook and uh, obviously here on YouTube. Yep, absolutely. <laughs> and, uh, well, you know, what does it keep your... Keep your mugs full and your spirits too. All right, let's go and do our intro. All right. Well, I was, you know, I'll, I'll have her, so it's not right. blocking us. I wanted her to clap.